welcome back to another episode of Orange Peelers. Ooh. Another week, another Rabbitohs lost. Eh? Yes, yes, it's really concerning now. Like, especially that the other teams who are down the bottom have looked like showing signs of improvement. So yeah. I'm getting really nervous at this point. Stranded down the bottom of the ladder. All to obviously, ourselves. You lost to the mighty Dargans. We did. Um, obviously, we'll touch on that pretty soon. The Bulldogs also lost though, so we're in the same boat this week. In terms of our little predictions each week, Zane, I've decided this week we're going to calculate it live on Orange Peelers on the podcast to give the audience, you know, a little bit of a little bit of a taste of the excitement that goes into <laughs> yeah, you the counting won. of the you scores. You reckon? Won. Yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure we both got five tips right. Yeah, does that sound about right. Maybe. So let's have a look. So the first game, Dolphins Manly. I had Dolphins 1 to 12 with Jake Avrilo, and you had, do you remember? I had Manly, but I, mm. I might like tipping comps and all that. I did change. I changed last second, but so, unfortunately that doesn't count here. I so did Dolphins won 1 to 12. Jake Avrilo didn't score. Your try scorer was Jason Saab, and he got injured, I think. Mm. So that's that gives me two points, and you got zero points for that game. Yes. So good but start. The GOAT did go over and score, which I knew game over yeah. at that point. Yeah, Mike when he Pickle scores, scores yes. that's that's and basically it. And then we had Panthers Bulldogs. I said Bulldogs one to twelve with Matt Burden. Obviously he did the score Bulldogs a try. lost, but Matt Burden scored. You had Panthers thirteen plus and Taruva to score a try. And I don't think Taruva scored. No, he didn't. But Zero. Panthers did oh, win. Yes. Panthers won, so you got a point, a there. point there. So then we go to Eels Broncos. We both tipped Broncos. You tipped Broncos to flog the Eels thirteen plus. I said one Which to they twelve. Did. They won by six. No, they won by sixteen. Oh, I've done that. Yeah, no, yeah. See this they one? Did. Yeah, no, they did. 16. So you got the 13 plus. You had, um, who did who did you have? Walters. I think he got, he got injured, didn't he? Yeah, that was a so, stupid, I don't know. But it was like, but a, you, it was an out there prediction that. But you it? did get two points and then I got two points for Broncos and Ezra Mam who scored a try. I remember when he scored, I was like, you beauty. So I remember I picked him. I don't often remember who I pick. And then we go to the Tigers Knights. Now we were split on this one. I thought Knights were going to win, and you tipped the, the Tigers, Tigers, giving them hope every week. Have you learnt your lesson? No, I think so. <laughs> so you said Tigers, and yet Olam. Um, none of that happened. I had Knights and Bradman best, which both happened. Yeah, and I had Knights one to twelve, so I got the perfect <laughs> oh, three there. You got zero, so this is looking pretty good for me, isn't it? Mm. It's looking very good for me. I think I'm up by five at the moment. Dragon Souths. Now, to your credit, you got one I here. I did pick the Dragons, and talk, I got the try scorer as well. Talk to me, right, though. I got three points here, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragons won okay. the four. Talk to me, though, because your theory is now dead. No, the theory is that I do it once a season. Yeah, Can't yeah, Can't do okay. it twice a season. So it's going to have to be next year where I prove myself again. Um, Dragons won 13+. plus. They did too. They won by 14. They did I'm too. sorry to break I'm, your I'm little trying, heart. Yeah, I'm sceptical. I'm like, no. So I had Dragons 13+, this, plus no, and Suli. Suli did not score. I remember during the game watching just the Dragons play and I was like, oh, um, Sue was going to score. They had their good week, didn't yeah, they? they did. So I got two as well. So we tied on that game at least because you got the trial scorer. Crash Le- over twice. The trial scorer. He also led in at least he two did, tries. Who cares about that? Fans come to watch the tries, not <laughs> the fence. So. Um, and then we go Storm Sharks now. We sharks both had Storm and yeah, Sharks got it done and we both had Farlongo and... He didn't score, so we both came away with zero there. Shocking. I was very surprised Sharks won when oh, they, Nico got ruled out. Well, Still also didn't have happening as an injury yeah. and Grant went off for 10 minutes. So. Yeah, true. And obviously we'll touch on all of that. So two games to go. I'm up by five here at the moment. We both had Roosters. Now, you said Roosters 13 plus, Zane. Bit of a genius pick from you. And you had Dom Young. So mm. you got the perfect three. I had Roosters you, 1 Roosters. to 12 and Crichton, which gave me two. And then the last game, I had Cowboys and you had Titans. I did. And you had Fafida. And you scored. had Titans 1 to 12, which is a perfect My three. The round. And did Holmes score? No, uh, he bombed the try. Oh, he, he did didn't. too. He bombed the try, which gives me zero. There we go. So let's go through and have a count. I think I've got you, but that last game really may have, like you got three points, I got none. So that may have <laughs> thrown a spanner in the book. So I got two, three, five. 8, 10, 12. I got 12 out of 24. Same as last week, half, 50%. 50, I'll yeah. take it. What do you reckon you got? I say 13, hopefully. Oh, hopefully hopefully yeah. 13. Hoping, hoping so you got you zero and then one, two, that's yep, three, okay. zero, and then <laughs> five, zero, and then eight, 11. Four, so you lost one, by one. 
See, this is why I wanted to do the they counting. Went dragons because it can class. What am I doing? Yeah. What am I doing? They won by four. And why'd I pick Billy Walters? Uh, <laughs> that, yeah, that cost me there. <laughs> yeah. And as you said, you changed your tip to dolphins on well, everything yeah, else. It doesn't count here though. It doesn't count here, unfortunately. Yeah. So I win again. <laughs> See, it's exciting stuff to count up. This was I, I was like, I need to do it on the show because every time I do it, it always goes down to the wire. I'm now up nine one Zane. What do you have to say for yourself? Yeah, I'm embarrassed. It's just as bad as South. Embarrassed. Just as bad as South, honestly. Yeah. Maybe even worse. No, nah, not worse. South are pretty bad. All right, let's just get straight into it. Dolphins Manly last Thursday. Talk to me about this. Great game, game off. Lots of tries. Manly yep. got up to a pretty solid lead early in the game, but then the back end of that first half, the Dolphins took over and took over for the rest of the game, to tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I thought Dolphins were probably the better team over the they 80 were. minutes, but yep. in patches, Manly were the better team. Yes, no, um, totally agree. Elephant in the room, Tom Trevojevic. Hurt again. Hamstring again yep. as well. Which did we make our predictions preseason what his injury would be? I don't think we did this year, but we probably should have, and <laughs> yeah. hamstring wouldn't have been paying much. i got to say, hamstrings <laughs> this week, a big, big issue, and it all started on Thursday night with Tom Trevojevic. Um, what, what do you think this means for Manly season? Well, we've seen in the past they kind of fade off at this point. Like they'll start the year really well and then Turbo gets injured and that's basically their season over. But I've got more hope for him this year. I feel like if they lose another playmaker, then that might be screws. But I still I still got hope for him. they just got a bit of their game they need to clean up, which yeah. is like fading out of games. That's their biggest issue. I feel somewhere. like with Garrick at fullback or if they go with... Cola, they can obviously they're not as good as Tom Trevojevic in my opinion, but I still feel like they're good they enough. can do a job. Yeah, yeah exactly. They can do a job. And they got Brooks and Terry Evans. They've yeah. been solid, so you know yeah. this origin period might hurt him a bit, but yeah, without I still Sherry, got high hopes for Manly this year. I do. Do you reckon they play finals without? I think Tom Trevojevic? they can play finals. What without I've seen Tom. so far, I think they can. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then on the flip side, we talk about Tom Trevojevic and his weak hamstrings. The fullback from Manly, the fullback from the Dolphins, had a Trey Fuller. He bounced, yeah, bounced back. What do you make of young Trey Fuller? Obviously, Hammer comes back next yeah, week. He's not Hammer, so, but he's what a would solid you, player. What would you do with him, though, with Hammer coming back? Would you give him a bench spot? I don't know. Not not in that Dolphins team, no. I'd have to just move him back to reserve yeah. and maybe negotiate with other clubs. I guess reserve. he can come in during Origin. Yeah, exactly, because Hammer will definitely get picked, I think. Yeah, like, sure. Can't see where he doesn't. At centre, you reckon? Yeah, yeah, it'd have to be center again. I'm very keen. Next week we're doing our origin teams. Yes, it's funny watching all the injuries happen on the weekend. I was thinking it's good. It's a good thing we're doing our origin predictions. You know, later, and I'm now looking at it going. Do we push it even later? I just wait till like the day before. Yeah, day before teams are selected. Yeah, because at this stage it's impossible to pick a team. There's a saying that Gus Gould has always said, but he said it again on the weekend. He doesn't pick his team. Wait, until you don't pick, right then. You don't pick your team until. The final round's finished, and if you want to pick any players, you write them down in pencil. <laughs> and I hope that that's what Michael Maguire's been doing because New South Wales are just demolished with injuries. Back to the Dolphins' manly game. Who were your standout players? Well, Trey Fuller, who we just mentioned. Yep. Um, Marky Nichols had a blinder of a game, I thought. Yep. Um, who else was there? Jake Averilla had a good game despite not scoring. I yep. thought he was solid bring the ball back. Then we oh, go to Manly, I thought... DC was just good as always. Um, can we talk about the slap from the Bromwich? Slap? The well, I don't know what you're talking about. When there was a t- player t- tackled to the ground, Bromwich actually like, rubbed his hand against his face. Oh, I didn't see that. Us, as a penalty for a high tackle. It was yeah, right. crazy call. Cool. I don't know how you didn't see that. Yeah, I, I, I mustn't have been paying attention. I can't even remember what I was doing. Like, I watched no, the game. That Bromwich know. also had a very solid game, I thought. Dolphins, yeah. they're flying under the radar, aren't they? Oh, so like, much. Not many people are like talking about them. They're like, in the they're top t- four, are they? Yeah, they are. They're fourth, but you know, not many people like seem to be aware yeah, of it. Six like, they're and three. flying at the moment. Who do they play this week they in the play Magic the Tigers. Round? <sighs> so yeah. I was actually I think I looked at their draw and it's like you know Up and down. Like, not yeah. like not too difficult, not too easy. So they can very much stay where they are, especially with Hammer coming back next week. Yes. I think they play finals footy. I think they do as to well. To be honest, for the first time. I think time if they do, like, you watch out because the Wayne Bennett side, despite wherever they finish it in, in the eight. Will always be up for finals. Yeah. Um, another, well, not another moment, but a moment in this game that I enjoyed watching was the Trey Fuller chip and chase. Yes, my favourite moment of yeah. the game. Yeah, that was that, that was one of the highlights of the weekend. I think that was a great little moment. I How think, many manly players were like there? 
as yeah. well. Like they just yeah. could not get a handle. Well, on him. how many players have you seen chip and chase over Tom Trebovic and then like win the race as well? It was pretty impressive. Didn't Reynolds do it in like Josh Magic Reynolds? Round of, no, Adam he, Reynolds did in like Magic oh, Round a few he? years ago. I think. I was a, like, Turbo was probably injured. I don't know. There was know, a play where Josh Reynolds scored a try against Manly. It was when they wore the multicultural jerseys. I don't know if you remember that. Jersey. Well, last year or? No, no, a few, years, a few years. This is like 2017, 2016, 2017. It would have been 2016, I think. And it was Golden Point, and somebody put in a kick, and Tom Trevovich went to pick it up, and it went through his legs. And Josh Reynolds was chasing and like picked it up and scored in Golden Point. Like right at the end of Golden Point, it was, it was sick. But yeah, Tom Trevovic, a quality fullback for him to get chip and chase. Maybe he just, his injury, <laughs> maybe faked it. A bit embarrassed for well, being chip and chase. Everyone's the cameraman for his injury. Yeah, oh. However, I think it was done before that point. I think he'd yeah. already done it by then. So. Well, he was limping and stuff before that with another injury though. It wasn't his hamstring, it was his ankle yeah. or something. And then God the cameraman sakes. just took him out. Did, did we ever get a welfare check on the cameraman? Oh, I don't know. But I think the players have a rule, don't they? When If they take out a cameraman, they have to help him up and... Help their equipment and all that. I think that's their yeah. place. Like, like being well, told they've got to. I don't think Tom Trevovich helped him. Well, up. I think he could. I <laughs> yeah. think he couldn't. Did you see on Instagram? It might have been. I think it was just the NRL posted on Instagram. I think just a bunch of photos of that game. And three of the photos were Tom Trevovich being injured. <laughs> just so random. Like him on the ground injured. And everyone was like, like, what is doing here? Like, why post that? But yeah, thoughts and prayers to Tom Trevovich and thoughts and yes. prayers to the cameraman. And the blues. Out, and the blues. Michael Maguire, any hair he had left, he would be pulling <laughs> out. Goodness me. Let's let's segue from, you know, this. Well, he would have been, I was going to say star fullback, but he would have been yeah, star centre for center. New South Wales. The star halfback for New South Wales He's in the Panthers out. Bulldogs clash. Nate, we'll, 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 we'll just go to that straight away. He was Nathan brilliant Fury that first out. 20 as well. He was sensational. Panthers would have won this by a lot more if he stayed on the field. He just was so clinical and so dominant. Just his kicking game. Every time he kicked the ball, I was on the hill, and every time he kicked the ball, I just groaned because it was just so inch perfect every <laughs> single time, forcing dropouts or you know, forcing errors like forcing drop balls there, like putting the timing of the kick in such a position where the Bulldogs play was pressured by you know the wingers. I was just in absolute awe of Nathan Cleary. In person, he's one of those players, and we've touched yeah, on him in the past before. In person, where, when you watch him in person, you appreciate how good yeah, he actually is. Yeah, and just yeah, the way he gets him around the park and just his kicking game in just particular. Just dummies as well. Yeah. You fall for him in the crowd, yeah. and you're like, whoa. Yeah, he was on fire. Just every time he was around the ball, you're just like, oh, they're going to score. And obviously then he got injured at the back end of the half, hamstring out for up to eight weeks, which is just not... Good news for Penrith, not good news for New South Wales, not good news for Nathan because, like, it's it's a reoccurring injury now and every season he seems to either get injured or suspended, doesn't win the Dally M medal. Looks like it's going to happen again this year. Yeah, and I've always said, like, obviously Nathan Theory is put into the GOAT conversation a little bit at the moment and I always say how if he doesn't get injured or suspended or if he doesn't have any off-field issues, there's no reason he won't go on to be the GOAT. Oh, I still think he will. And it's but um, and John's I, had so do, where he was suspended. Yeah, so, so do so. I. But I'm just saying it's it is getting more and more concerning every injury. Where I'm like, please don't let his career be ruined by injuries, <laughs> like because he's so good. And even Tom Trevovich as well, you can say the same for. But what do you think this means for the obviously the Panthers and New South Wales? Well, because the Blues we'll talk about in a few weeks. What yeah, we'll, talk, talk, we'll talk about it now. Well, what they should do there? Yeah. Or? Who would you replace Nathan Cleary with? As of right now, yeah. both the other options are injured, or three options are yeah. injured, which is Moses, Reynolds, and Hines. Yeah. But yeah. by that point... Pretend that Hines well, is yeah, healthy I'd and Moses Hines, has played one game. Hines, and as the six, I'm tempted to say Moses, but I feel like Luai. Luai? Yeah. You'd have Luai only, over Burden? Only because Luai's a right side, but Burden is there as well, very yeah. close. But Burden, I feel like if he's going to play, he should be on the bench as a utility because yeah, he can play I anyway. Yeah. I wouldn't have him as a six and just put anyone at 14. Yeah, not fair. It's very tricky because as you said, they're all injured. I think because my first choice was Cleary Moses. Moses currently injured, not playing this weekend. It looks like he's going to play one or two games before teams are picked. Um, 
it's almost at the stage where he just has to show he's healthy and he's probably getting You're right, Moses is going to come out. So they desperate. play Souths in two weeks. He'll come back in his return game, have a blinder, so he gets yeah. fit for Ojin. I I'll just probably, know what's going to happen. Like, I'll back in Hines Moses with probably Hines 7. Moses oh, 6. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Moses 7, Hines 6. Okay. Is what I'd probably go with. I feel like Hines more experienced as a 6. Um, a lot of people say, you know, probably shouldn't pick both of them together. I... I disagree. I understand the argument because they're both halfbacks, but they've both also also had experiences five eight. Yes, they can both play the five. What do you think of Joey's the greatest blue of all times? Um, pick of Cody Walker and Nico. Nah, (laughs) right now. I was was about to say if it's not Moses Hines, pretend Moses is injured or doesn't come back in time, whatever. I'd probably go Hines Burden, but I do. But at the same time, I understand the argument of Burden can be so valuable off the bench in that utility role. So maybe you do go Heinz Luai, but I'd have Burden ahead of Luai. Yeah. At six. Yeah. Okay. Then what? Well, Katie Walker's just not in the conversation, nah. is he? Or, uh, no, he's not, but he did have, he did play all right on the weekend. I thought. But his team's not going all right, are they? Because <laughs> yeah, no, Jack Martin's pulled out as well, which yeah. is like a big blow, so. <laughs> well, he didn't, he's, he said he's not coming out of retirement. Yeah, as he said, like, Siasa in the right, yeah. he needs to focus there, which... Fair enough. Yeah, it's, I, I'm glad I'm not Michael McGuire, and I'm sure Brad Field is sitting somewhere laughing. <laughs> I'm sure he's glad he he quit or got fired when he did. Poor man, he's aged so much in the last few years, oh. hasn't he, since <laughs> leaving South. And, like, I saw an image of him like from when he left South to when he left the Tigers. Yeah. He's just aged so much. I'm I reckon like he'd almost guy. have aged more f- yeah, from, what from the, the last weekend than he I'm did like, in that period. what the poor Tigers done oh. to him. I'm like, oh, gee. Yeah, there's... I would not want to be the New South Wales coach right now. Billy Slater's somewhere laughing, thinking, how easy is this? Hopefully Queensland get their injuries this week. Well, weekend. they do. They're missing Tino. Yeah, true. You know, they're Hammer, obviously, Hammer comes Hammer, back. Yeah. Coates has been out. Yeah. But obviously not as much as New South Wales. Do you have any smokies for your Queensland side this year? Because I feel like some I don't like really think about Morgan Queensland. Get in there. I, I think Queensland just have too much. To choose from. Yeah, that there probably won't be any smoky picks. Mm-hmm. Like, like my host there, some Mark Nichols. Blues Mark Legends. Nichols. Last year. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, and as I said, I don't really think about Queensland. Yeah, I don't like to. I don't really like should. to, so. Um, back to the Panthers-Bulldogs game. Obviously, Nate, as as we were saying, Nathan Cleary had injured. very well in this I game. I do want to say quickly, before we talk about how, how bloody good the Bulldogs are and how they're going to win the comp, the the pickle, there's the New South Wales halves pickle. There's also a Panthers halves pickle because Brad Snyder got He's injured on the out, weekend so as who's well. Who's going to come in there? So... Do you reckon someone like Dane Laurie is just going to play in the halves? With they might, Lloyd? with Lloyd halfback. Tigers can have a preview of what they yeah. They might have to. Yeah. Because, like, who else is there? Jack Cole? Yeah, they can just throw Dane Laurie in there, I guess. Yeah. It'll be interesting. To, I'm very interested to see what they do. It's like, keep an eye on Penrith. They might have a little bit of a fall off. But, yeah, let's I talk about it. I doubt it for now with Edwards playing the way he is. Yeah. I still think I'll be fine, but we'll have to wait and see. On let's that talk one. about how the Bulldogs are going to win the comp this year, Zane. I don't think they're <laughs> going to win the comp, but I feel like they're definitely capable of playing finals. Yeah. Mm. I, I thought, like, obviously I'm a Bulldogs fan. Call me bias. I really did think that they played quite well. I didn't think they deserved the win. I think Penrith were the better side, but that last 10 minutes, they were coming from the Bulldogs. Yeah. They were hunting them down. But just... I think if there was another five minutes, they probably win. I don't think that. Nah. You don't reckon? I don't think so. I feel like if it came down to the wire, Penrith would have got it done. Yeah. I mean, even without Cleary. But yeah, well, without... there was no Cleary, but I, like it was two tries apiece. You look at the score, 16-10, you think, oh, Bulldogs lost by the a dogs try. Are currently... They didn't lose by a try. They lost they by two right. penalty goals. And they lost by a missed conversion. They're ninth, yeah. Okay. If they win this week and mainly lose to Broncos, they go back into the top eight. Um, obviously, that's and you need Raiders to mainly well, lose to Broncos Raiders, is likely. Well, yeah, so we got to yeah. beat Raiders and then mainly lose to Broncos, which is both the Friday games. Mm. So it's a very nervous Friday for me. <laughs> it's, that'll define my I mean, weekend you for sure. Plenty of time, you're not. Off the charts yet, like the Rabbitohs are. Oh, I'm just so, saying, in terms of, you know, because to... I'm going to Magic Ground, my weekend will be ruined if, you know, Bulldogs lose and then Manly win and we're just well out of the eight. But if we can get into the eight after Friday, I think I put on my story. If somebody wants to pay me a little bit of cash, I'll get Doggies 2024 tattooed on me. <laughs> show, show the camera you see our Sydney tattoo. No, I prefer not to. Why? It's kind of faded a bit. <laughs> Is it? I think everyone got to see it last year. So. Come on, mate. Like right, this one. Yeah, yeah. All, all one of them, but Doggies 2020. Yeah, sure got fixed up when I was in Bali, but... Who did your tattoo? It, so. I'll get the same dude to do my tattoo. Yeah, no, it's one of my friends from school. <laughs> oh, reach out, mate. But, yeah, talk to me. What did you make of the Bulldogs as a non... Yeah, that was good. Oh, solid. I held in there. I feel like Bulldogs last year probably had 40 put on them this so game, true. but 
No, they're, they're doing well. They're also flying under the radar, I think. Yeah. I made a video about underrated teams. Then <laughs> Bulldogs were literally my reason for making that video, and I completely forgot to mention it. <laughs> like, I could not believe it. I'm like, they're literally the reason I made that video, and I didn't even mention it. And you got absolutely peppered in the oh, comments no, I was like, as well. Oh, I saw it on my way up on the train. I'm like, how did I forget the Bulldogs? So like, they were the reason you made that video. Yeah, that and you I didn't completely I got too focused on the Dolphins oh, and man. Like, That's actually yeah. kind of funny. Um, you should have made an apology video. Oh, the, have, yeah. There was that many Bulldogs fans in the comments of that oh, video. That every right. I saw yeah. it. I was like, how did I forget the Bulldogs? <laughs> My God. I'm, but anyway. Yeah, no, we're playing good footy. As I said, like two trials apiece. Um, and obviously like in the moment and under the circumstances, Nathan Cleary injured. We won the second half. Um, there was a couple of times where we crossed the line and it wasn't a try because of a forward pass. Just little, little yeah. things that you need to get right if you want to you know be a contender yeah. and teams like Panthers they get those things right and you know the fringe teams get them wrong yeah. what do you and think so of the it's dogs? frustrating what do you think of the dogs now that the fact that everyone's hyphen them up now do you, are you expecting them just to come in and get pumped and just be like well well I don't think so because they're playing like, as can a you see a world when that happens though? no I honestly think, don't think they... we're a side that hang in games and well do you have the feeling that now that everyone's hyphen them up they can just come out and just possibly nah. just get pumped and no I've, like, got, well, I've got confidence in them you and do. it's scary, but I do have confidence in them where even going into this game, we were $5.50. Everyone was tipping Panthers 13 plus. And they're also like, the only side who have lost to the team that's in last place at the moment. <laughs> yeah. We'll say that. I was, I was and adamant. They couldn't beat the Rabbitohs. I don't know how they can win the comp. I was adamant that we weren't going to lose 13 plus. Like I knew we'd hang in the game. I didn't expect us to win, but I was like, well, we're not going to get blown off the park. Actually, and I take back what I said just then <laughs> about how if you can't beat the last place team, you can't win the comp because Penrith lost to the Tigers last yeah. year and won the comp. So yeah. Yeah, I'll take on, that all back. I'll Come take that on. all back. But yeah, I, after the game, I was a bit like upset because it was one of those games where like the Storm game where they just competed and you're proud of the effort, but at the same time, you want to win. Like you're so close and to winning. And they'll eventually get to that point where they will figure out how to win those yeah, tight 100%. games. Yeah, 100%. So they just need to keep hanging in Especially there. getting the experience in these tight games, I think can be valuable later in the season. Yeah, dogs and aren't used to tight games, are they? No, it's they're It's always not. just big 13 yeah. plus losses for them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And if you told me at the start of the season, like when the draw released, if you circled this game on the calendar and said, Bulldogs are going to lose this game, but they're going to score the same amount of tries as Panthers. I would have been stoked. I would have mm. acted like we'd won the comp. So in the moment, it hurts because it was so winnable. But when you look at it from that perspective, it's like, well, they did all right. And yeah, as you said, like I think they're under the radar. I think they can. I honestly think they can play finals footy. I if think they, they can. They, I, they think, just gotta, I think the premiership's a bit of a stretch. No, so they'll I win don't the comp. think they'll go that far. They'll win the comp. You know it. It's, all the stars are aligning. Um, but... Yeah, I think they just got to keep playing the way they're playing and, you know, build on it week by week. What did you make of the Panthers? I mean, despite not having Clearer, they were just their typical clinical. Like, they could have won this game by a lot more, I think. If Clearer was out there, I think they would have. Yeah. But I no, they were just still good. Like, this was a very good game, very competitive game. Yeah. Um, any standout players from either side? Dylan Edwards. Yep. As always, has to get a mention. Brian Toto ran the ball very mm. well, I must say. Yeah, totally. Josh Adokar good. tried his best, to, but, you know, he had a tried this allowed. Yeah. Kick out's been good. I again. thought Matt Burden. But Matt Burden was definitely the best up. Bulldogs player. Yeah, I thought he was sensational. And I want to give some flowers to Drew Hutchison as well. I thought he had, honestly, I'm going to say it, I thought he had his best game of the season. I thought he was very solid. There, once again, were just one or two times where he probably. Made the wrong decision, but I thought his short kicking game and long kicking game, but short kicking game in particular, forcing a couple of repeat sets against a very good Panthers side and just, you know, freeing up Matt Burden and getting Matt Burden to play his best footy. I think, like, Matt Burden is undeniably, like, he's in origin talks. Yeah, got and it. You can't, you got can't it. say that he's going to be picked, but he, he, like, people are talking about him for origin, right? Matt Burden is playing his best footy, and I don't think Drew Hutchison is getting enough credit for that. I think Drew Hutchison is a big part of why Matt Burden is playing his best footy. And yes, Drew Hutchison, ball in hand. He makes the wrong decisions a lot. He misses tackles, all this stuff. He's not the best halfback. But give him credit where it's due. He's a big part of the reason why Matt Burden is playing very good footy. So shout out to Drew Hutchison. Um, obviously, team lists were probably going to drop while we're on the podcast. I'm still seeing lots of Bulldog fans want him dropped. I, I don't want Drew That's Hutchison just dropped fans, yet. Though. Yeah, it is. Just dogs fans. I um, don't criticise anyone. Let's move on to Eels Broncos. Now, I, I, I saw the second half. I didn't see the first half, but what did you make so of did it? I. I saw the second half oh, more sick. than I well, did the first half. What was your favourite part of the first half? <laughs> I mean, Eels, they, 
we're up 2-0. And then they knocked the ball on and Walsh ran the whole field and scored. Oh, really? Yeah. That's what I remember most from that Far first half. Yeah, no. Then good. the second half, the Broncos just went wild with the ball. Yeah. Nam got a great try. Like, who else scored? I think Walsh got a second, didn't he? No, I remember nah. Nam's try, though. Oh, no, Cobo, it was Cobo, Cobo that Cobo scored, scored over that the dead ball line. try over the dead ball line. Yeah. Ben Barber-esque. <laughs> I, from what I saw, from what I saw, Eels seemed to be competing in the game. And the difference was... When Broncos got a chance to score, they scored. And when Eels had a chance, they bombed it. Yes. It looked like Eels were making a lot no, of breaks a, and I then bombing I feel like that was a lot of inexperience that cost that. Yeah. Like the amount of times where they like ran through and then just the last pass hit the ground or went forward or knocked on or whatever, where Broncos on the flip side, every half chance they got, they converted. So the Eels the are bottom four at the moment. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, I think, I think so. They're fifth, or they 14th, might be fifth, maybe they're fifth thirteenth, fourteenth, or something like that. Nah, thirteenth, yeah. 13th. Yeah, okay. Warriors are down there. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, no, not much to say. It was just oh, I expected this sort of score one. Literally, yeah. I, I said thirty-two to sixteen. I think. Yeah, was my so prediction. So pretty, yeah, pretty damn close. Off, but yeah, yeah, no, it was just Broncos did what they had to do. Parramatta without Guffo, I guess, yeah, you know, could have been worse. Yeah, and worse. with like no Moses, no Gutho. Yeah, in the rain as well. You know, Broncos throw the ball around a lot. They made a few errors. So if it yeah. wasn't raining, it could have been worse. We've seen no Reynolds as well. Yeah. Sort of evened it up a little bit. And at Combank. But was there any standout players? Nam, Walsh and Cobbo. Yep. Um, oh, three, I'm going to say. I thought Blaze telling you there was a couple he of tried times. His best. There was I mean, a couple like, times where he dropped the ball, like the high ball and that sort of thing. But I thought in attack especially, I thought he had a pretty solid game. I think Ethan Sanders is, you know, looking comfortable. Like, uh, you wouldn't... If you watched him not knowing how many games he'd played, I think you'd expect that he'd played more than he has. Mm. He seems more experienced than he is. And, yeah, I think considering the circumstances, I think the Eels did their best. Like, I think there's positives for Eels fans. Considering there's no Gutho, no Moses, it wasn't their worst performance of the season at all. Nah, nah. And yeah, I, just, I think Broncos are playing much more like the team that people expected them to be. Um, anything else out of that game? I don't really have anything nah, else. Just said it all then, really. Then we go this to game, however, Tigers not Knights. Much to now, say. I'm pretty sure you said this was your last, favourite game no, of the week. I saw the last 20 minutes because I was at the club and yep. it was just boring. Yeah. So Bradman best last try. I didn't see the Tigers because I was at the bathroom at that point. But yeah. Tigers scored late, obviously, but it was all, all done by that point. It was a yeah. consolation try. There was a couple of Sinbins early oh sorry ace in been early in the game via the tigers and that's Was what there? sort of let that's what sort of let the knights into the game to be honest from what i saw now i didn't see the whole game but as i think tigers were up and then yeah sinbin knight scored and just took all the momentum and then sort of carried that momentum into the second half daniel saifidi sinbin late and then that's where tigers yes, scored a consolation scored. try but yeah Bradman what, Best had a blind or off yeah. had a very good game. Smokey for Origin? Yeah. Pick him for Origin? Uh, yeah, I'd, why not? Well, I mean, he has to I be in the conversation for sure. Yeah. I mean, he's I, the incumbent. So. I'd have Critter at centre. I don't know who my other centre would be. Could be Burden. It could, could be, be Best. Could be Trell. Maybe you know. it could be Trell. Honestly, it could be. Like, just, I'm, 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 <laughs> we'll have the Latrell Mitchell conversation Lomax, very soon. But I'm, Lomax could get a name. I, would, I wouldn't pick Lomax. You wouldn't pick him? Nah. I'd pick Fox over Lomax. Yeah, okay. I'd have Toe and Fox. What about Suwali? I'd have Suwali over Lomax. Okay. Uh, right. On the wing, I wouldn't pick... Well, aren't, your fan, yeah. aren't you a Lomax fan, are you? I don't think he should be an origin. No. I, just, him, I, think, I don't think I think so. we've got to give him a run, see how he yeah, goes. I don't think so. But, yeah, Knights, Tigers. Um, from what you saw, obviously you said Bradman Best had a good game, but any other standout players? <laughs> no, no it was just, really. everyone was just average. I thought Papa yeah. Lee for the Tigers scored a double. Yes, and he did. Brent Naden, Brent Naden got a try good, at the been, end. He's been playing good footy for the Tigers. Yeah. I think we talked about it in the thing with this game, game was just yeah, Knights. They're starting to win games, but they're not like looking convincing any of them. Like they're just like yeah, they've played pretty weak opponents lately. Like they beat the Warriors just. They yeah. beat the Tigers this week. Like let's see if they and play. Like we flogged them. You did. If they play yeah. a top side, how are they going to go? I don't think they'll compete at all. Are they Ponga in the A? Back. No, they're just outside it. Yeah, the, yeah, they're tenth, but they've got their win percentage puts them in ninth. Is it just me or do the Knights just feel like the most irrelevant team this season? Like no one's <laughs> yeah. spoken about them that yeah. much. They're just like yeah, they're there. They'll probably finish like eleventh, twelfth sort of place. But yeah, yeah, they, they haven't had a convincing win. No, that's, not that's at all. My issue they've had them. more concerning losses than they have convincing wins. Yes, they're but, just yeah. strolling along. 
letting the season go on. Yeah, probably much. won't be winning a comp, but won't be getting the spoon. I, either, look, so. I don't think they'll play finals. No, but they're not going to get the spoon either. So yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, they they could get the spoon, but I don't. I don't, I don't think, think they will. No, think they I don't will. think they will. No. But they could though. Eels, I, Eels. I'd like. It. I'd prefer them to get it. I yeah, South South there at the moment. South very much spoon favourites. I think at the moment. Uh, at this stage, like, I have the to. The way be. Titans are playing now. Um, before we move on, obviously we're flying through a couple of these games, but I honestly don't know that much to say yeah, about no, them. Neither. Respectfully, sorry if you if you're a fan of these teams and you're not getting the in depth analysis you come to Orange Peelers for. Maybe go check out Bloke in a Bar. Get yeah, some extra. They, they go on about half an hour. Yeah, exactly. Game, I'm, and I'm not saying listen to Bloke in a Bar and not us. Come listen to us. Get your two minute analysis, and then if you want some deeper stuff, go to Bloke in a Bar. They'll run about They'll it for talk twenty about minutes. Every single player. I do want to say the Knights. They've picked up a couple of injuries. Potent, there's question marks over Frizzell and two others. I don't remember who the two <laughs> no, others I are. Don't Greg Marju. Let me have a quick look. He'd be a big loss for him, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, there was three big names, and I've just mind blanked. Let's go NRL Physio. Shout out to NRL Physio. He's the one Saifidi of the The brothers had a much improved game as well, off yeah. from what I saw of him. Maybe they get picked in origin. Let's have a look. Shout out to NRL Physio. Do you follow NRL Physio? I do, on Instagram. One of the greats. He, did a, he actually talked about, he did a video on the increase of injuries over the weekend because everyone's saying, you know, how many injuries there are. And I'll give you a little fun fact via an oral physio. There was actually less injuries this weekend than the average weekend in 2020. Really? No, sorry, in 2021 and 2020. So the two COVID years, they averaged 15 injuries per weekend. And then from 2019, and then, so 2019, 2022, 2023, it was 13 injuries on average. And this year, it's averaging 14. Mm. So it's like just pretty much as expected. And his point was... It's more big name injuries over the weekend rather than lots of injuries, mm, if that makes sense. But it? there was a lot of hamstring injuries, which was weird. Um, the other players, Toss and Gamble. So, so I think it was Saifidi, Marju, Gamble. Did you just throw in the equation of big name? Did you? No, I'm Toss saying this is, this is back to the nice injuries. <laughs> now, Toss and Gamble's a huge name. I'm sure Willie Mason would agree, <laughs> don't you reckon? Um, yeah. So, so some little injury concerns for the Knights, which would also affect their finals run. And the Tigers, I guess, just keep trying to do your thing. Who do you say? You said who plays Tigers? No, Dolphins. Dolphins do. And, and the Knights have the Titans. Yeah, okay. Well, unfortunately for Tigers and Knights fans, the Queensland teams are undefeated in the past two or three Magic mm. rounds. So, could be tough. Could be tough. Obviously, South. Play the Cowboys. Are, are you the only undefeated team? No, Dolphins, but they oh, aren't really counting. They've only played Dolphins, on, but so I We're guess yeah, South. Are. And they played Sharks. Yeah. <laughs> South are the only undefeated and team. And Bulldogs, just it out there. Bulldogs and Dragons are the only teams to never win at Magic Ground. <laughs> Dragons obviously the buy this yeah. week. And speaking, so it was obviously between the Bulldogs and the Dragons for who got the buy. Yeah, because Dragons maybe. got it because they've never won. Yeah, I don't know if they've just lost by more points than what the Bulldogs have, or something like that. But yeah, I think Bulldogs it was definitely between those two teams. I don't think they'd give the Bulldogs buy. We have a big following. I said Dragons. Yeah. I think we'd have a big one. Flip a coin, like Maybe. whichever team it's heads is going to be missing it. it Maybe. Could, could have been Maybe. the Bulldogs. What? Dragons got it. Who would you assign heads and tails? Bulldog. Oh, you'd go Dragons tails Bulldogs uh, head because yeah, Dragons have tails. Yeah, doesn't matter really. It's just... <laughs> Come on, mate. That's an important decision to make. Mm. Now speaking of Dragons and having the buys, they they've actually they're the first team ever to have back to back buys because they have the buy for Magic Round and they had the buy on the weekend when they played <laughs> South Sydney. Oh, what call it? What call it a buy? That's a bit. <laughs> That's disrespectful <laughs> to the South players, I think. <laughs> uh, talk to me, Zane, as a frustrated South fan. Or maybe well, not frustrated like, this week. Talk what, to me. What can I say? Like, what, what are we supposed... Where can we go from here? Oh, no, you tell where me, Where do mate. we go? I don't know. Like, I cannot just... Uh, this was our most winnable game in the last month, and we blew it. Like, I just... It's scary. Like, when do you reckon South can win their next game? We are talking about this with the Titans a few weeks ago. Why don't you go through the draw and tell me when you believe South can win their next game? Let me have a look. So they got the Cowboys this week, then they got Parramatta in, Mo- in Moses' return. I think we were actually talking about this on our online competitive game yes. the other day. And I said, I think this weekend against Cowboys, based on how they played on the weekend, I think the that's Cowboys a winnable have to bounce game. Back soon, though. But just the injuries in, of South. In hurt. Magic Round, Cowboys have to bounce back. Eels is a winnable game, but I Moses honestly will be back think... And yeah. he'll be having a blind, so he plays Origin, like he did yeah. against the Dogs I last think, year. I think Eels win that game. If Like if I'm just tipping, like South, Cowboys, it's winnable. I'm tipping Cowboys. I believe South has South, the Eels, it's winnable. That. I'm tipping the Eels, and then they have the bye. 
probably don't beat the bye with the way yeah, they're they playing. They played a Gold Coast. And then the Titans who <laughs> we, are starting to click. <laughs> we've never lost to since 2016 in that game that we should have won over in Perth. Yeah, okay. When we kicked the field goal and they awarded it and then they took it away and then Gold Coast kicked one. It South love Absolutely Perth rubbish. Games. Yeah, we do. <laughs> like, um, you know, that time when we played over there in the rain. Chris Sando put a kick in the end goal and Reese Wester scored. In, in the puddle. giant puddle yeah. when, yeah, when Reese Wester scored off the Chris Sando kick in yeah. the rain in Perth. <laughs> One of the great moments. But yeah, I'm going to yeah. say, if I have to gun to the head, when a South win in the next game, give me around 14. Gold Coast. Yeah. yeah. But I think they can be competitive in the next couple of weeks. I don't know. But yeah, talk to me about against the Dragons. What did you like? What didn't you like? I what are you concerned about? The effort into the last bit of the game. I thought they started... I think... Uh, this probably sounds gross and biased, but I think we should have been winning at halftime. Mm. I think we should have been up 12-10. Why? Because Cody Walker scored in front of my eyes, in line <laughs> with me, and they took it away. What for? I don't... Oh, because apparently Jair put his hand on the ball oh, in yeah. the whole collisions yeah. that were going yeah. on, which, rubbish. <laughs> Absolute rubbish. That was a try. And then Lomax kicked the two-point field goal. Yeah, that was the, sick. It was a good kick. Can I give you a fun fact before you continue about South Sydney? So, stat leaders in the NRL, two-point field goals. Who do you think has kicked Drag. the most this year? Oh, what player? Lomax, Who? wouldn't it? Yeah, Lomax yeah, has kicked, kicked one the at most. Wollongong as well, yeah. didn't he? So, yeah. Lomax now has two two-point field goals. Can you guess who has who is in second place? Oh, I'm trying to remember them all. It's not the Broncos. Who else has kicked the two-point field goal? I'm, I know there's another one. Mm-hmm. I know it. I'm trying to... It's not the Bulldogs, is it? No, nah, not Bulldogs. Let me know when you I give know up. there's been a second one. I know there's been a second one. Oh, it's. Okay. Let me know it's when you It's not Cherry give Evans, up. is it? No, nah, not Cherry Evans. Okay, I'll give up then. Give up? Nobody else. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to. I swear to God, there wasn't. There's been some like, attempts, obviously, like, for example, Warriors that's what against. I'm thinking yeah, of. I'm I'd thinking. say you're thinking. Because Cherry Evans has definitely attempted him, Sean Johnson. But yeah, Zach Lomax the only player to kick one this year, and he kicked two of them. Crazy. But continue South in the second half. What would you like? What just, did you like? Yeah, they didn't fall apart. The Dragons just were too good for them. Yeah, like down the middle, that completely dominated. And Latrell in goal was pretty disappointing, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I was impressed with his attack, though. I will say that. Yeah. Like he got involved. He ran the ball. <laughs> Like he cracked a hundred run metres. Yeah. That almost never happens. <laughs> he caught it. He didn't pass to the winger. He ran the ball. That's what I'm happy with his defence. Ben Hornby came out and said, "Oh, that's he just needs a few weeks under his belt to get that back in order." I'm like, "Well, okay, we'll He's, see." How long has he been at fullback? Because that's always been an issue. Yeah, I know. So. <laughs> so I think he needs more than a few weeks, Ben. But no, I agree. <laughs> I think Latrell Mitchell in attack. He genuinely had a very good game. Even yeah. Cody Walker two clicked tries. very oh. well. Walker, yeah, Walker wasn't too bad. I'm not no. saying. I'm saying their combination though, like. Cody Walker put in the kick for the and Latrell. I'm at the point now silky. where I believe Jack White needs to be moved into the middle of the field mm. to get his hands on the ball more. Because yeah, he yeah. is explosive when he gets it. And I feel like he's getting wasted at centre. Yeah. I, really I agree, do. to be honest. I agree. I, I reckon he's got to go into the halves somewhere. Yeah. Get his hand on the ball more. Even at lock. <laughs> yeah, it sounds strange, but yeah. yeah but like more even so back than centre. Even second row. Just, yeah, work, just, like. And because he can handle that, especially yeah. with Cameron Murray out. No, I just he, I What feel do they like, have to lose? They're I feel in like last. he ne- needs to get his hands on the ball more. Yeah, I, I 100% He's so agree. wasted in the centre. Yeah, I thought Latrell Mitchell did very well in attack. His defence just... He, here's a bit of advice for Latrell who watches the podcast. <laughs> if the ball is on the ground in the Ingall area, especially in wet conditions, don't try and hit the ball away. Just ground it. Yeah, you never know. Just be, ground it. It could be a giant puddle there for the soccer. <laughs> like, you don't, he's just, yeah, it really bugs me that he... Yeah. He over and he panics as well. Yeah, yeah, he panics. He, he got a pressure. And then, then just his laziness getting across his positioning. He always seems to be a bit too slow, just out of position. Mm. And the Dragons exposed it multiple times yes, off kick. A lot so of teams out off this a year. kick. There was a couple of times where the the, the Bellin one where Latrell Mitchell yeah, missed it. I yeah. think Sloan put oh, it. I thought he grounded it, Latrell, but seeing the replay. So did I live. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, there's why is this even going upstairs? Latrell grounded that for sure. No, nah, complete. He, he kept he, trying to hit it away, which ground the ball, <laughs> just grounded in goals, dive on it, but. He'll live and learn. I'm sure, obviously, he's not coming and taking advice off me. He's an NRL player. I'm sure he knows now to ground the ball. Um, any other talking points out of this one? Dragons else? forwards just dominated. And that, they're um, right right edge of Ben Hunt, Jack Bird, and Zach Lomax. Mm. Killed us in that game. You actually, you mentioned earlier in the podcast, you said, Winston, any smoke is for Queensland? And I said... Jaden Sewer. I don't care, but yeah, Jaden Sewer, I think, has to play. He's been so good this year. Yeah, and I thought Sloan had a very solid game. Yeah. Like, he didn't make... T- 
too many errors. I mean, he has that <laughs> errors in him, but he didn't make too no, many. Sloan did have a Ravalaro yeah. had a quiet game. And that whole left side did yeah. go through for the Dragons. They didn't really go up that no, way. No, they, they, they kept going right. Yeah, yeah, they yeah they which I, I thought which they I feel like it was to target, stay away from Jack Wyden. And, no, because Jack Wyden's no, no, yes, the, yeah. that's why they were going for Thompson. Yeah. That's why they were going for that. Because I thought it would be the opposite. Because Thompson had pretty hard night under the ball, didn't he? Well, I thought they'd stay away from Wyden and attack Cheekham at centre with yeah, Sua and Suli, well. who would just side, and the new half as well. That's why you went Suli, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> I thought they'd attack Cheekham in that new half back. Who's second row on that side? Oh, God, I don't even know at the moment. Keon? It would be Keon, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah Keon sort going of strengthens right, so. it a little bit. I think Jai yeah. Arrow came on there at some point. I think this game was sort of just... What I expected. I've got a question for you, Zane. Obviously, South Sydney, they've won one game this year. You're and losing. To your Bulldogs. Yeah, shout out to and the Bulldogs. Bulldogs. You're losing every, nearly every week. You've won one game against the Bulldogs. But as a Bulldogs fan the last couple of years, you go in, and it's starting to change for me this year, very slowly. But you go into games, and unless it's, I guess, unless it's a game where you're playing, you know, the Dragons, who are a lower ranked team, you usually just go into the weekend thinking, yep, yeah, like, we're going to lose. Gonna and then lose. when you win, it's a great feeling. But and that's what I'm starting to feel are like you, now. Are you at the stage where you go into the weekend giving it's, your team no chance of winning? Yes. Oh, I am. That was my <laughs> last hope last that. week. That was my last That was your hope. last like, hope? This week, it's just, we're going to lose. If we win, it'll make me feel better. Because yeah. that's how, you know, if you go into a game expecting to win and you lose, it's hard. But when you're expecting yeah. to lose and you win, you're like, oh, Well, what there's, a there's an age-old saying, Zane, that I like to live by. It's tough days make the good ones sweeter. Yes. Or if, if it wasn't for the rain, the sun wouldn't feel so good. You've got to cop those losses. How many games do you reckon South will win this year? Be um, honest. Do you reckon they'll come They're on? at one. I'll back them in for like four or five Jeez. at least. I think when they get you all want... their players back, they can win games. It's just... Do you reckon it's at the back end of the year they can yeah. get it together and yeah. push for some more? We have win a couple at the mm, back Because Campbell Graham and Cam Murray are supposed to be due back around the same time. Well, I was going to say, it's going to be very hard to win I believe many AJ's before. Back. AJ, who scored one try this year, is yeah. back. Um, I, it's it's going to be hard to win games without Cameron Murray. I think oh, they God, will win yeah. some, but... I, I've, yeah. They would have been a lot closer if he played that game. Yeah. Because the middles so. it destroyed us. If Murray was out there, he could have stopped it a bit more. Yeah. But the poor guy, I think he's just ready for a rest. He's like, mm. you know, <laughs> season's enough. over. I can't, you know, not much more I can do. Latrell, we, all, we all said to each other in the bar, they're like, where do we go from here? Like, yeah. what can we do at this point? I want to say before Except we move on, and be patient. Luttrell, but just back on Latrell quickly, I'd pick him in origin. You would? I'd have him at centre. What Do you reckon that will that'll, um, rev him up for the well, rest of the season? I, just, I think he showed on the weekend, like he's a, we know Latrell Mitchell's a good player and he always steps up in the origin arena. And I just think at centre, he's going to do a job. At fullback, he's a liability, not at centre. I'd pick him at centre. Mm, so honestly. you would have him in your side, would you? Yeah, and obviously we'll do our our sides next week probably. I'm thinking about doing it a little bit later because of all the injuries. But like honestly, I'd have Latrell Mitchell in there. Interesting. He's a he's a good player. He's a superstar. Mm. But well, like I say, if he played for the Dogs, he'd be your favourite player, would he? Nah, nah, nah. He was Matt Burner, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, say he, when he was going to sign there in 2020, how would you feel about Jake Avrilo, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Flanagan. No, you Dylan can't, Napa. You can't hate Latrell. Remember our yeah, list last year? Most lovable play. Everyone loves Latrell. No. It's not a handful of people I'm, don't like I'm, him. I'm telling you this for free, and we, I don't want to go <laughs> too deep into it, but some of the reports and accusations out of the game on the weekends, yeah. I don't think everyone loves Latrell Mitchell. Uh, like, I'm, I'm just going to say. I love the guy as a person, but really annoys me as a player sometimes. Yeah, it's something it's really frustrating to watch. But. Um, speaking of lovable players, Nico Hines, he was ruled out late in the <laughs> Shark was. Storm game. He was ruled out very late. But the Sharks went on and won without him. What do you make of the yes, Storm Sharks game? they beat a top side without the best players. So Roosters this week in Magic Round, where yeah. the Sharks tend to suck. They yeah. always <laughs> have an awful Magic Round for whatever reason. It seems yeah. to be cursed for them. But they did it. They beat them down there and made a statement. Yeah. Now, that, this is what making a statement is Ben Hornby, beating the top side, not <laughs> losing by 30 to a top side. So great work from the Sharks. They got it done. <laughs> but can we talk about the Simbin? Oh, do we have Grant? to? Like, what? Do we have to? No, it was just crazy. Yeah, it was. It was like, mind-boggling. It, it, like, <laughs> that happens every game where a player will just run past. Like, he hardly even touched him. He didn't... He wasn't even looking or thinking about the kicker. I don't yeah, think... Like, I, I can't speak for Aragorn. I don't think he was even thinking about the kicker. Or, no. Like, how is that a penalty? In the words of Gus Gould, what the hell was that? <laughs> what was. the hell was that? It's just... I understand we have to protect kickers and I understand in... New South Wales Cup, Lockie Elias, 
He had his legs. Yeah, that was in half. completely different. Can I give you a hot take? And this is so that controversial. A, yeah, he, I don't even think that should have been a penalty. Oh, well, you see, the thing with that is that he was actually targeting like the kicker. He was actually running at him to put pressure on him. If, Harry Grant was not. If doing an attacker that. is targeting the legs of the kicker, which a lot of people claim James Graham did in 2015, <laughs> but he didn't. But if a player targets the legs of a kicker, penalty. 100%. Yeah, and that's what happened in that situation. This yeah. one but didn't if, even happen. It, you got to understand, it's a contact sport. Players are going to touch each other. That's, it's going to happen. Like, it's rugby league. It's an age-old saying, but he can't disappear. He can't. Like, Harry Grant isn't even thinking about the player. His eyes are not looking at the player. He's watching the ball, accidentally runs into him. And I said it the other week, where players are going to... Kickers are going to start just holding their leg out waiting for somebody to touch it. Kickers are going to stop aiming for the ball and start strategically kicking into the path of where the defenders are coming. That's what's going to happen unless they make a change. It's absolutely ridiculous. And the NRL needs to step in and they need to say, okay, the rule is if they attack the legs, penalty, bin them, send them off, whatever. But if a player's not attacking the legs, play on. Because otherwise kickers are going to expose the system. This is what happens all the time when these stupid little rules come into play. And coaches, the smart coaches will expose it. They will. Your Wayne Bennett, your Bellamy's are going to expose the rule. Yeah. Where you watch this weekend at Magic Round, kickers are going to leave their legs out just hoping to get hit or trying to get hit. It's like in baseball. I don't know how familiar you are with baseball. But if the pitcher throws the ball and it hits the player... Zane's dropped his lolly. Zane's throwing things with that upset. <laughs> if the pitcher throws the ball and it hits the batter, the batter gets walked to first base. And you see players in the baseball stick their like stick their body out to get hit on purpose, to get walked. And that's what's mm. going to happen. Kickers are going to get hit on and purpose. that's the same with the hip drop rule as well. Yeah. Players will tend to jump to try and hope that it happens. Yeah. Like, I know they don't want to get injured, but I'll try and make sure it happens. Yeah, and that's my concern with... This and that sets a dangerous predicament or precedent, whatever the word is. Bit of both, why not? And I'm glad Harry Grant is fighting this and I hope he wins because genuinely coaches will expose it if Harry Grant is found guilty. People will expose the rule and it's just going to make for a very ugly, ugly few weeks until the NRL then reverse it. That's my take on it. Yes, I totally agree. But it's, apart from that, Atkinson did have a very unexpectedly surprising game. Daniel Atkinson was Very incredible. Good. I Filled thought it for Hines perfectly. The crazy thing about Daniel Atkinson's performance is he's only he debuted like two weeks ago, right? Yeah. He only got better as the game got closer and as the game got like longer into it. Like his last five minutes were incredible. His last five minutes, and I said this to my mate on the weekend, and I'm not saying that Daniel Atkinson is going to be as good as these players, but his last five minutes reminded me of like Nathan Cleary or JT. In just his organising yes, of, very much, you know, just coming up with clutch tackles or getting his team into the right spots. Just his organising at the back end of that game to clutch the game. It was so good. Incredible. Like perfect kicks as well. Yeah. Put in. Like, then obviously Talakai got that runaway try and Talakai yeah. has actually resurged, not to 2022 form, but he's been very good yeah, this year off the bench, has. I think. Not very to the much. point where I think he should play State of Origin. <laughs> never say never. Yeah, never say never. Maybe Damien Cook can tie in at centre in Origin. Yeah, well, Experiment. No, nah, Talakai's playing good footy. Be it. Atkins, all the like, Sharks are like they're all being very solid. Yeah, and they 100%. finally beat a top side. Yeah, they're finally legit. Like, Beating Melbourne and Melbourne means you're legit. I'll say so, it. Sharks are legit. But nah, you watch them come out Magic Round this week and just lose by yeah, twenty. It's like, Magic Round. They don't win at Magic Round. But yeah, the amount of times in just that last ten minutes where Storm looked to score and then somebody would you know make the try saving tackle and you go, who was that? And every time it was Daniel Atkinson. I thought he was absolutely terrific. He's put himself on the map. Mm-hmm. It's just like a player. Like Teams will target him. Two sure. weeks, I was like, yeah, who's Gold that? Gold Coast, you're looking for a halfback. There you go. Oh, no, he'll have... I wonder how long his contract is yeah, for because he'll have is. money thrown at him. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this as well. I would keep him there instead of Trindle. I'd go Heinz after Trindle's going to get named on the reserves this week, I've heard. Yeah, okay. Instead of in the site. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, in reserves. Like, but he's oh, been stood down still, so that's like why yeah, it's kind okay. of strange. But yeah, I'd leave Atkinson in the hearts. I think he was that good. I think he's played himself into that role. And just with like the way Trindle obviously got suspended and stuff, sort of let the team down. So, like, why put him back in when you have Atkinson playing this good? But yeah, definitely gained the round though. This one, definitely yeah, very exciting. I, I can't believe Sharks won. I was in shock. Just like with Hines out as well. I know Storm were missing players, but like down in Melbourne, I didn't expect Sharks to win even with you had Hines. Missing playing. the eight preseason, didn't you? Yeah, I, I did. I I didn't think they'd play finals footy, but looks like I'm they wrong. Definitely will. Yeah. They um, could definitely push for the title. 
Outside of Atkinson, any other standout well, players? I said Talakai as well. Yeah. From the Storm, any... Oh, Grant did his best. Did his best. I thought Wishart was, was okay. all right. Yeah, Wishart was okay, but Grant... Not good enough. Cool, but it's ridiculous. For Lungo good. had a, a few exciting good moments. Good game. But yeah. yeah no Coates, no Pappenhausen, no Hughes. Going to be a struggle for the Storm. I yeah. thought, still expected them to win, but Sharks are too good for him in the end. Yeah, no. Nah, as we said, shout out to the Sharks, like... We've been very uh, critical of them, and we've been waiting for this little period over the, the month period where I think I said last week I don't expect I don't even I I think I said I needed to see them win at least one of the games, but I just wanted to see them compete in all four. Mm, and now they've won year, one. You know, they lost like, by fifty to the Storm. And yeah, they lost twenty eight nil to Penrith. Yeah, so no, nah, it's good, yeah, very good signs from out. especially without Nico Hines. Oh yeah, I know. that's where it's really that's good. Where it's most impressive. This yeah, next 100%. game, Roosters Speaking Warriors of not impressive. The Warriors. Yeah, Damn wagons. They really Bid wagons. You know what they really remind me of the Cowboys of last year. Yeah, and we mentioned this they last got week. a couple of wins early in the season, but then went on a big losing streak. Exactly what the Cowboys did last year. Yeah, they won like two of their first three, then just fell apart. Yeah, hundred percent. And the Warriors just, look that first ten minutes. I'll say it worse than any South performance this year. Yeah, that first ten. I'm yeah. Talking, after that, they got it together a bit and showed a bit more fight. I think they won the second half. They did, yes. Yeah. But that first ten minutes, disgraceful for NRL standards. They could not make a tackle. They could not get a hand on a Roosters player. Roosters just went boom, 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 scored four tries. Yeah. And when yeah. the Warriors finally got the ball, you know, they got it together and put up a bit of a fight. You know, if you take out that first ten minutes, this game would have been a lot closer. Yeah, I just think that first 10 minutes where just that Roosters left edge and the Warriors right edge oh, defensively just, just could not get a hand on them. I'm yeah. trying to, who was on that side? I believe it was... It would have been Dallin and No, Barry? it wasn't Dallin's side. It was the other side. It wasn't was, it the Warriors right side? No, oh, no it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't yeah, Dallin's no, side. Dom Young's yeah. right. So it was the Warriors, so Montoya. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think Montoya played. Hang on, oh. I'll have a look at who it was. But it, Find out. I believe, no, they weren't starting players. One of them had like number 20 on his back. It was... Edward Cossey and Adam Pom- Adam Yes, Pompey. it was. Those two, Adam that's Pompey. who it was, yes. They Orange were, Peel is legend. <laughs> he kicked good goals, though, Pompey, I must yeah. say. That, his <laughs> defense, that side's defense oh. was disgraceful. Yeah. Disgraceful that first 10. But Roosters, they just they make it look so easy, don't they? Yeah. Well, I, like Manu look, makes it look easy. Like, he, they couldn't get near him. Yeah. Anymore. Like, he just threw the ball off. Tommy on perfect position, ran yeah. over and scored. Well, as you said, like those two players, obviously, I think it must have been the Roosters' game plan to target them because yeah. they were both they non, were not meant well. to start. Yeah. Like, why would you put both? Because two, two of us, the Shaq pulled out and Montoya pulled out. But so. why not split them up? <laughs> well, why would you put them both on the same reminds side? Me of That's kind of weird. Ball came on in that Eagles game last year. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. kind of yeah, weird, was, but yeah, yeah no, nah, not good, not a good start from the Warriors. Getting they did pull con- it together. Getting concerned for them now. I'm very concerned. They're bottom four, like. You know. Especially with Sean Johnson injured now. Yeah, but he hasn't been in his best form either. Yeah, no, he hasn't. He hasn't, but yeah, they really do remind me of the Cowboys of last year. Very yeah. similar. Like I don't, I don't see them playing finals, and I can see them. Oh, I mean, I'm not writing them off yet. Like, you know, the Origin period could. Come They've got a tough draw coming up. Listen to this. And they got Penrith this week. Yep. Panthers, and then they play Panthers Dolphins, who are top four. Mm-hmm. And then they play the other bye. So Panthers, Dolphins, bye. Cowboys, who it's like, yeah, probably can win that. And then uh, Storm. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's a bit of a tough run over the next four or five weeks. Get together. So, yeah, they need to pull it together. But, yeah, what do you what do you make of them in terms of their season? I mean, it's just so much hype for them just to fall off. I mean, you can't write them off yet. I'm definitely not because I know they do have good performances in them. We saw it early in the season. Yeah, yeah. They should have beaten Melbourne. They flogged South, like. They can compete. It's just, I think they're in a slump at the moment. So we'll have to give it a few more weeks and see if they can get it together. Yeah, 100%. Because you know, when origin period, that's normally their peak of their season. Yeah. But because we saw it you know, years ago when, you know, they'd start off pretty average, origin would come around, they'd find form, then Johnson would get injured and then that would yeah. be the end of their year. So yeah, <laughs> that could happen again this year. We'll they could. See. Yeah, it's just, it's it's funny Watching all the bandwagon Warriors fans just like give up on yeah, it. Let's see what what Mount TikTok. Smart's gonna look like next week. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> very good point. Because so just on TikTok, like you know, Kiwis even say it. They only care about the Warriors when they're doing well. Yeah. Well, I made their union obviously fans. like on TikTok. I've I made a video earlier in the season about like say for example their home and away jersey review, and like yet all the Warriors fans. Whenever I make a Warriors related video, always pops off 
all the Warriors fans in the comments hyping up. Even on like non-Warriors videos, you get the Warriors fans just hyping up the Warriors. Yeah. And then I did a video there on There was a their, lot of them there on Sunday, yeah. I must say. Heaps in the crowd. I did a video on a, on their Indigenous jersey and just the complete change up in comments of everyone being like, nah, this jersey sucks like our season and stuff like that. They've all just given up on them. It's very bandwagony. Bandwagony. Yeah. Bandwagony. But any... Thing else out of this game? Who are your standout players? Always Angus like Crichton, Dom Young, Dom Young, Young, Joseph Manu, and whoever else is on that side. It was Sam Walker. Sam, oi. Was what Sam about Walker. Sam Walker's try assist? Like Crichton was on the other side, but Sam Walker was on. Yeah, I know. That, that, that crossfield kick where just didn't even think about it. Just and picked it up. Those out of Warriors and defenders it. could have definitely got there. If yeah. They had the effort. Yeah. Like, they could have tackled him. I probably could have. Yeah. the truth. Like it was right in front of me. I'm like, Do you reckon you could tackle Daniel Tebow? In certain situations, maybe. Certain situations. <laughs> Someone else gets gets it started. I can come and finish the job. Flop you on just top. chop his know. legs. Yeah. Nathan Highmars flop. <laughs> did, you, did you even make any tackles in the charity match last year? Oh, yes, I did. You did? I, they didn't go I well. Didn't. I was involved in tackle. I didn't make an individual in tackle. I was involved. So I think in, in my two years in the charity match, I've made one tackle where I'm like first first contact. I've, yeah. I've no, I, down I, I had no first there. contact. There yeah. was one when I'm in that first one when... I think it was age. Yeah, no, age ran over the top of me. And yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, you can see that on the camera and I'm just done. <laughs> right at the start yeah, of the second yeah, half. Yeah, I know what you're talking remember about. Remember when we were a man down yeah. and I ran on well, and he ran yeah. over me. I was like, oh dear. I remember, I, no, I don't remember. I I think it's safe to say that I've definitely missed more tackles than I've made. And I think a lot of my missed tackles are, you know, on the public record all over TikTok. Because <laughs> Jason David. Do you have a line break assist though? No, I, you do. I do. You should have yeah. had a try assist and Emilio just ran yeah, over the sideline. Uh, I'm blaming Emilio for Robbed. that. Would have been a highlight yeah. package. <laughs> a highlight package. Um, but yeah, so you said they were your stand-up players and then like Warriors, did anyone stand up? Not really. Sean was good, actually. He was good from the back because I yeah. could hear him speaking as well. He was trying his best. But Dallin, quiet game. Quiet game. SJ tried his best, but he's just, you know, he got injured as well. What do, we, what do you think the chicken wing tackle? Yeah, not good. Like, yeah, he's Did been talked up for Origin as well, Luke Curie. What yeah, he that? has That's, actually. Uh, hear me know. out. Nah, hear me out. This is what I want. Tedesco fullback. I want Luke Brooks five eighth and Mitch Moses half. Oh. Jeez, okay. Maybe even and Aaron Woods. He's still around. Aaron Woods, I think, should for just some experience, up, should just hurry up and retire. That's <laughs> the truth. So, uh, no, nah, I reckon that'd be good. Yeah, bring back the Tigers combo for Origin. <laughs> nah, no, nah, I think Kiri. It's weird because I remember a time where he was locked into the Origin team. It was like, no, then he played that one and game it, and he was shocked. It used to be like Luke Curie's in the Origin team. Who are we going to pick? Like Cleary? Are we going to pick Pierce? And then Curie just always got injured yeah, at Origin. But 2020, and then 2020, he got his, got his shot chance, and then and they dropped him for Cody Walker. Yeah. So, yeah, shout out to Luke Curie. Maybe he gets a bit of redemption like um, Mitchell Pierce did <laughs> back in 2021. Yeah. Oh, 2019. I think that's going to be Nico Hines this year that gets mm. that redemption story. But yeah, let's move on to the final game of the week. The Queensland. Did you see this Dolby. coming? Nope. Titans 20 nil at half time. The game ended as 20 to 18. So Cowboys yeah. better the second half, but they were shocking that first half. Yeah. And I reckon if Titans didn't get injuries, they win this by a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Obviously, Brimson went, went off. Brimson went off. Big losses for the Titans. Huge like, losses. Brimson's Huge. been outstanding over the last few weeks, I thought. He's been, as, as we said, like we've said it so much, but as soon as they need, like he started at centre, we said he has to be fullback or five eight. They move him to fullback. And the Titans start playing good. Brimson starts setting the world on fire. What a shock. But what I like about the Titans is they're showing a lot of fight in their games. Yeah. And that, I think that's the Des Hasler effect. Yeah, they look in. more like a Des Hasler side. They do at the moment. They really keep hanging in all their games, which Titans of the past would have just crumbled. Yeah. Like Melbourne game, they hung in. Manly game, they hung in. Warriors game, hung in. This game, they've hung in. Like all their recent games, they've hung in, apart yeah. from those first couple where yeah. they were shocking. But. I can't write the Titans off yet, honestly, for a smoky out of the top eight no, spot. I don't, I think, don't so. think they I will get so. there, but I feel like yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm not having them for wooden spoon anymore. I don't think they will. Yeah, Souths. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel like Titans are going to... No, start, I know what you I mean. I feel like they're going to start winning they all They are playing games some... And, they are yeah. starting to play a bit of footy. They are. I, I think finals is a bit of a stretch, but I'm not... I can't write... I feel like they're a better chance of playing finals than the Cowboys are. Well, I was about to say, on the right. flip side, what do you make of the Cowboys? Because they've fallen they've off a fallen cliff. They've fallen apart. They'll top of the table, I think, for a few weeks. Yeah. Start of the year, but they've lost five in a row now. Hopefully, yeah. it's going to be six by the end of the weekend, <laughs> but I doubt it. But, you know, they've fallen badly as well. Like, yeah. They should have lost this by a lot more than what and they like, did. It's not like they've had a, like, they've had a couple should injuries, they, but like, no, no, it's Payton, be under pressure. 
I think, yeah, I think it's so weird. I was reading this. You know what my hot take is? Yeah. If Todd Payton gets sacked, Demetrio takes over. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Why? He's very high regarded up there. He's won competitions with a lot of reserve grade sides around the Cowboys. He was yeah, okay. Paul Green's assistant in 2015. I would not rule out Demetrio one day coaching the Cowboys. There you go. Somebody clip that up. Yeah. There you, you go. Ready. Who did he first? It's very just, high regard. Like, I, think, still. I think Payton does have to be under pressure, but it's just so funny because like, he was coach of the year two years ago. And so was Anthony Seabold. Yeah. Like, but that's, he, that's he, rugby he league. Two years that later, is what so. rugby league is. Being a coach is a nightmare. Yeah. It's like that's it. that's the beauty of the job. And even players, like it doesn't matter how good you have been going, it's how, you, how are you going now? And like Demetrio... Took him to the... No, was it Bennett or Demetrio took him to the grand final? South. Yeah. No, it's Bennett. But the was next Bennett. year, it's prelim. Yeah. Demetrio prelim. Then they... But you look at that season overall. They only just weeks. made the eight that season. Like, it wasn't yeah. a convincing season whatsoever. But still, though, like... You, they came good at the right time It doesn't matter how good you've gone in the past. All anyone cares about is what's happening yes. right now. Exactly. Unless... If you're like a new coach, like... Say, like Cameron Serrato last year, you get given a bit, bit of a leeway, bit of a chance... But if you're an experienced coach, if you've been there for a couple of years, like Brad Arthur's another one that's under yeah. pressure now. Obviously, like I feel like Brad Arthur, more reason to be under pressure than Todd Payton, but yeah. Todd so Payton's I think got Payton to be is under up pressure. there right now. I know, like I always see Cowboys fans that question Payton's, you know, decision-making and selections and stuff. Mm-hmm. So like obviously the whole Jason Tormalalo situation as well. That was a few years ago though, wasn't but it? It's all, yeah. it's all things. It all adds up. But yeah, anything else out of this game? Who stood out to you? Uh, Brimson, which we'll see soon. Four, and, and they both went off injured. But Cleese yeah. Haas. Yeah. Had that's a blinder he did. I think it's guys like Cleese Haas that make the Fafita situation yeah. make and sense. And Dave Fafita did have a very good game, I must yeah. say. Did his job. So Brimson uh, moved to 5'8". Yeah, he must have. Who played that's fullback a, in the end? Keeney. Okay, okay. I yeah. didn't even notice I, that. I thought... Brimson played full. Yes. Yeah, and then I'm just trying to look at how many minutes. It doesn't matter though. He's Brimson still, played. Like five eight still works for Brimson as well. Yeah. Well, I as we said, like fullback, rather in net and center. Yeah. He, so he played. He missed the last ten. Four and missed. Yeah, the last twenty. And that's when Cowboys yeah. then scored. Yeah, and both for more, the most underrated, one of the most underrated yeah. players in the competition. Very good. Missed player. the entire last of last season. Yeah, and everyone he's a smoker for Origin, I think. Yeah. That's like he, I'm, he's a smoking. And Jamin Jolliff as well. He's mm. been very good. Or no, Jamin Jaloffy. Jamin. We'll call him Jamin because yeah, no, it's Jamin like Jaloffy. Jamin Jaloffy. Or Shane says. Um, yes. Yeah, that's. I don't have anything else to say out of that game. How about you? Yeah, no. Was, Done? Yeah. Shall we, I got the upset though. Yeah, you tipped it. No, nah, yeah. nah, credit to you because that was a very good upset to pick. Yeah. I think tip of the week. We should start doing that. Tip of the week, of the and week. you won tip of the week this week. I'm not going to give you any bonus points for it, though. Yeah, maybe you should get bonus points well, for no, an upset. That means I win the round, so yeah, that's not happening. But something to look at, you know, double points for an upset. Yeah, then I'll just come in and tip all upsets. I actually mm. won the Sport Shed TV. Shout out to Sport Shed TV. <laughs> oh, yeah, their the, bold yeah. prediction. I came out on the and said three upsets. Team has come out in seven minutes. Yeah, same, so we'll get rid of get that. Get nervous, but yeah, the Sport Shed TV bold prediction. I said three upsets to happen. And the Titans were the final upset, so they won me 50 bucks. Um, that's going go. to the Magic Round Fund. <laughs> keep an eye out for the hot dog reviews. Actually, do keep an eye out for the hot dog reviews, Zane, because I have some big names lined up. I'm excited. But let's do our 5 4 3 2 1. Speaking of big names, talk to me. Who okay. are your five biggest names Ooh, from it the was weekend? The hardest week so far of making this list. Too many to pick from? Yes. One point Ezra Mam. Two points, Jaden Sewer, South Legend, might be returning soon. We'll have to wait and see on that. <laughs> He'll say the Dragons. Three points, Daniel Atkinson. Never thought I'd say that name on this list, but did yeah. I? Four points, Egon Brimson. And five points, Dylan Edwards. No Roosters players. Edwards. Surprising, isn't it? Controversial. Bias, bro. Like, That's actually young, just straight Manu, up bias. Walker, Kiri, Croydon, Tedesco. Oh, wow, I can't believe that. But That's actual anyway, bias. It is what it is. It's not bias, it's just they didn't make the list. Fuller, no Fuller. He he would have been no, close. No, he's online. close though. I had him at one point. Call no me change. biased. I would have had Burden up there. Burden as, as well. I good. considered. I'm trying to think who else was good. That's also because I'm also named Low people that aren't on mine. Went. These like they, those guys aren't on mine either. Um, Bradman Best. Yeah, I'm Bradman Best. There. He's not on mine either. There's like there was a lot to choose from. A lot. Even like the goat. Would have been Marky cool to Nichols. Have there. Yeah. I think I said Fuller. Um, yeah, lots but, to yeah. pick from the, the cameraman. Yeah. The cameraman. I see your list, though. So I went one point, 
Crichton, Angus Crichton. Uh, two points, Jaden Sewer. I thought he was outstanding, playing very good. Three to Brimson, very crucial in the Titans victory. I went four points to Dom Young. Some of the be- one of the best ten minute periods of all time from a player. And I've gone five points to Atkinson. Jeez, oh, okay. The Sharks. Five points. I thought he was that good. Wow. I thought he was the difference. I really do. I think obviously Nico Hindred out. I think if Atkinson wasn't there as well, they don't win that game. And just his clutchness in the last ten minutes. Just so that turning means our up. player of the round. I think be. it's Atkinson. Brumo seven, Atkinson eight. Because yeah, I know it's Atkinson. Yeah, okay. Dan Atkinson. <laughs> Never thought we'd say that. Player well, of the round. Had heard of him okay. a couple of weeks ago. There we go. But look, I I genuinely I think he was that good. He was instrumental in the Sharks' victory. Look, you got him at three points. Like, yeah. Yeah. You happy with him being yeah, no, player I'm happy. of the round? I just didn't expect yeah. him to get the five from you. I was like, okay, I, there we go. I thought he was that good. I, I, at least I'm not biased, mate. No roost. Yeah, no, that's just. Uh, that's just how it went. That's no. the that's the beauty of our list. I'll tell you what, actually, speaking of you having no roosters players, shout out to Hainsey, who last week was the he his points were the ones that go towards the tally, okay. and he picked five roosters players. <laughs> so make sure if you're listening, you can't do that. I'm please sorry. get in the comments and comment your five four three two one, and let's stop Hainsey from doing that again yeah, because. No. He, he was the only person that commented. You're not allowed to pick five players. They can. They team. can do whatever they want. I feel like we've got to change that rule. That's they can, extremely... If we want if we want Hainsey to not be picking it, I need other I'll people... I'll come out and start picking Rabbitohs Why don't you go comment on it? Yeah, go comment week. on it. I'll start picking Rabbitohs. Go comment no, on the YouTube. just in general. I'll, pick, do, I'll comment yeah, as well. well you get to I'll pick comment, it. Yeah, that's I'll what make I mean. a fake account and comment. <laughs> yeah, and do I'll it. pick five Rabbitohs players Let's stop Hainsey But if I make the fake account and comment the Rabbitohs players, it'll be pretty obvious it's me, won't it? I hope somebody now goes and makes a burner account and pretends to be you but now get in the comments on youtube and let's stop paying you from picking roosters players because <laughs> genuinely last week roosters players five of them got added to the total Gosh. tally for player of the year and that's not on so please get in the comments and comment your legitimate five four three two one or comment all south players or comment all border players who cares oh, oh, but get in there all warriors players I, who cares because i know i know there's people that get this far into the podcast and then don't comment even though we ask them to so please i'm begging you while you're listening right now, go open. If you're on your phone or on your laptop, go and click on the comments and write your comment as you listen, please. Let's stop Hainsy together. Um, Zane, this week, no Instagram questions. Nope. We're doing a bit of a magic round magic special. Moment. We're doing our... We should um, call it, I've got the magic in me. That's like, we'll get like a big <laughs> subtitle and a logo yeah, for it. Yeah. I'll, I'll Clip re- it up. I remember to do that. Yeah, I've got the magic in me. If you're watching right up here. It's, I've got the magic in me. I'll yeah. try and go and find the clip our, to play. Our new, um, new little game we're going to be playing here. Yeah. So let's get into it, hey? So yeah, <laughs> our, our most magic player ever and our favourite or like most magical moment from said player. You know what I'm going to say? Who? You remember that time in Perth? <laughs> Old Chris Sando? Halfback before Adam Reynolds. So is Chris Sando your magic player? Yes. Yep. He went to the Eels after that. Kind of a bit, bit mediocre there, but he was good yep. at the Rabbitohs. <laughs> And his magic moment was in this pouring rain game. You've never heard this trial before, surely not. In Perth, <laughs> pouring rain. There's a big puddle in the end goal. Chris Sando spots it, puts a little kick in there. Broncos players are expecting it to roll dead. Gets stopped in the puddle, and who's there? It's Reese Wesser. Reese Wesser puts his hand on the ball. Reese Wesser scored the try. Yes, I've never heard that story before. Yes, it's a, it was an incredible try. If you haven't seen it, it's one of my favourite Rabbitohs tries of all time. Go check. It's your favourite try of all time. One of my favourite. Why don't you bring it up more often? Oh, I probably should. I feel like you never talk about it. <laughs> what so, about yours, Winston? So your magic player is... Chris Sando. Chris Sando. Oh, Reece Wesson. I'll throw Reese Wesson yeah. as well. And that's why not? your magic moment. Yes. Best mag- most magical NRL moment, though. You've yeah. got the magic in me moment. My magic in me moment, Zane, <laughs> is... Sorry, my player... Ben Barber, yes. obviously very entertaining player, obviously a bit controversial. <laughs> We're going now. a bit controversial players, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we picked some absolute crackers, haven't we? But Ben Barber, you know, my childhood idol. Um, met, met him once. I think I only ever met him once, but have a, have a <laughs> photo with him as a little kid. And his magical moment, I'm going to go three of them. Because Ben Barbie, he did too much magical stuff. He's chipped to Greg Inglis, where Inglis and Ren the full field of the try. <laughs> not throwing that one in, are you? Greg Eastwood? <laughs> Greg, oh, oh, you're talking about no, the Greg South Inglis, Sydney yeah. try. Yeah. Far out. No, that's not yeah, my he, magic He didn't moment. go well when he went to the Broncos, did he? Barber. Yeah. Went there for a lot of money. He yeah. stayed there long. Yeah, that's went right. to Cronulla, found his form again. So yeah, put, put, the, on ben Barber, put the kick but... in and then got bumped by yeah. Greg Inglis. <laughs> no. No, no one could get a hand on him after that. So, moment one, 
against the Eels. He's famous try in the corner, which these days yes. is just normal, though, to be fair. Yeah, that was insane Moment two then, against the Knights where he pulled the ball from the dead ball and brought it back into the field and play as he dove on yes, his face. That was a very good and try. moment three against the Storm in Mackay, his hometown, when he ran from the in goals, ran like 60 metres, somehow got out of the in goals, got hit high by Cooper Cronk, kept going, and then puts in the kick for Josh Morris, who scores a somersault try. They are my three Them magic in me moments. moments. All from the same season? No. So the first two are 2011 and the second okay, one's yeah. or the last one, 2012. Yeah, okay. There you go. So thank you for listening. Thank you for playing yeah. Magic in Me. Yeah, we'll play the theme song again. <laughs> yeah, theme song playing. Um, <laughs> Kid of the Week. Okay, I'm going to go. Brought to you by The Vintage Thread yes. at The Vintage Thread underscore on Instagram. Where should I go here? Jeez, oh, I came prepared for this. All right, well, I'll go first. My Kid of the Week. I don't have a Kid of the Week, but I have a worst Kid of the Week, and that's South Sydney. Worst Wearing year. their away jersey, the white shorts and the white <laughs> trimmings against a team in all white. Yes. Why? Because the away jersey will... But wear the black. Their home jersey is white. They our wear the home, home jersey, jersey all the white. time. South always wear the home jersey. And the oh, one time they wear the, the white, it's against a white team. Like, it wasn't... Stupid. It wasn't at the point where get I was... A better, get a real away <laughs> jersey. I wasn't, I'm sick of it. I wasn't looking at this jersey <laughs> on the day like, oh, which team's the Rabbitohs, which team's the Dragons? Yeah, I know, I know, but come on, get a real away jersey. That's all I'm saying. And then also don't wear a white jersey against a white team. Wear the black one. Idiots. They I'm going to go last. with the West Tigers in their home jersey. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. In Tamworth. Yeah, just whatever. Great pick, mate. Great pick. Boring game. Just mediocre decision, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, Zane. Magic round is upon us. It is. You're feeling the magic in you. Yes, as I do. Well, maybe next week you'll feel the magic yeah, in no, you. Yeah, like last year. Yeah, like last year. But yeah, let's get into our predictions. Obviously, all the games at Suncorp Stadium. Yeah, we got Bulldogs and Raiders who played it last year. And the year game. before. Yeah, and yeah. No, they didn't. They played the Sharks the year before, didn't they? Did they? No, I'm pretty sure Raiders. No, you got played the Knights, didn't you? Mm. I thought, uh, I could you be wrong. You played the Knights one year, didn't you? And the Sharks played the Raiders. But anyway, they... No, I played, we did play Knights 2022. Yeah, yeah. okay. Because Trent Barrett got sacked. I am going to go Bulldogs, although... You're tipping the doggies. I am, but at the same time, everyone's underestimating the Raiders. Dogs should probably win based on form, but if Raiders... Raiders were good. Raiders winner will not be surprised. So, but I'm going Dogs. I'll go with Adokar. Yeah. Safe. He's he's actually scored every magic round. Has he? Yeah, there you go. Nice. Now, I'm also going Bulldogs. I'm going to go 1-12. I think... I remember last year's game, it was high scoring but tight. You My try scorer. It's got a weak gutted dog. It's the it? weak gutted yes, dog. <laughs> he, he plays mind games with Ricky Stewart, and we were just looking at the team list off camera. Salmon's named to start, and Preston's on the bench. Does he like take that nickname like in good stride? I don't know. Salmon. I think <laughs> does he does. He it? We said it. I actually ran into his mates at the footy the other week. They they were like, oh Winston. I was like, oh like how is? And they were like, oh we're mates with Salmon. And I was like, oh the weak gutted dog. And they all like laugh. So yeah. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think. I think the only reason he's named to start is because it's against the Raiders and Ricky Stewart and we're playing mind games early. So I'm going to go Salmon to score. And then we have the traditional Manly Broncos Friday night game. Obviously, I traditionally Broncos, Broncos flog them. should win this. Well, except for 2021 when Manly put 50 on them. But no, no, it was the other way around. And Manly put 50 on him in, in 2021. Oh. Remember Turbo had a killer of a game that year. Yeah, fair enough. I'll back. Then I'll, Broncos I'll back. won 38 nil next year. Yeah, that's the one I'm yeah. thinking of. Yeah, yeah okay. No, yeah, who are you going this I'm year? I'm Broncos. They should win this magic round. Yep. Hit Chelsea Dagger a few times after <laughs> a couple of tries. Um, <laughs> I'll go <laughs> Cobbo. No, I won't go Cobbo. I'll go Walsh. You go Reese Walsh? Got to score a magic round, yeah. Well, that's good. lucky because I'm actually going to go Selwyn yeah, Cobbo. Right. I'm going the same. No, I Broncos, make a mistake there. Broncos <laughs> 13 plus <laughs> and Selwyn Cobbo to score. Cobbo, fun fact, he's uh, scored hat tricks in... The last two major That's rounds. a cast patrol start, that one. So yeah, to get ready for that. If you're a betting man, like I will be this weekend while I'm up at Magic Round in Brisbane, come say hi if you see me. I'm going to be on Cobo to score a hat trick three years in a row. A hat trick of hat tricks. Yeah. A Magic Round hat trick of hat tricks. Titans, Knights to kick off Super Saturday. Oh, I like the Titans Magic Round. Knights yep. can definitely win. But I think Titans might get it done. I think Dave Fafita can get a try. Yep. Nice. I'm going to go Knights. I'm going to okay. go Knights 1-12 to with Gags. Captain Gagai scoring. Yeah. South legend. South legend. Sharks, Roosters. Game of the round. Yep. I mean, Sharks, they're... Oh, no, yeah, they're, no. Ter- game terrible the- record at Magic Round, yeah. I must say. They beat the Titans the year they got the wooden spoon in the first year, yeah. but since then they've been... Haven't won. And I don't know what it is about Magic Round that they just can't perform. We should have said also just... They quick- should be better this time, though. Back to the Bulldogs quickly. They've never won at Magic Round. Yes. Right, we, should have, we should have mentioned that. The Sharks, though, but have yeah, a terrible go record. Yeah. Should be better this time, but I'm going Roosters. 
13 plus, but purely based on that record, but Sharks, they will be up for it this year. I'm just taking the piss by saying that. <laughs> yeah. Tell the truth. And then try scorer? Dom Young. <laughs> yeah, hard to go past Dommy Young yeah. in form at the moment. I'm going to go Roosters as well, but only 1-12, to 12, as you said. I think Sharks, they're playing a bit of footy this week. Is Nico named? Yeah, no, I don't. Don't, don't know. know. I haven't seen yet. So he might, quick, be. He might be. He might look. not be. We'll quick know. look. He's named, okay. but he apparently he's not training yet. But I'm going to go Roosters one to twelve, and Angus Crichton to score. Probably. Probably. And then the South legend. As the well, yeah. prime time Saturday game for some reason is South Cowboys. Yeah. Zane, who, yeah. who are you tipping in this one? I'm going back to the Rabbitohs. I'll stay yeah. loyal, even though it's not con- convinced by that prediction. But it's try scorer. Cody Walker hasn't scored yet this year. AJ is back. AJ is back. He scored one try. He hasn't scored in Australia. So you're going to go AJ? Or no, I'll Walker? go Cody Walker. Okay. He should have scored last week. Yeah. I said I want to keep picking him until he finally gets that yeah, try. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go south. I'm tipping south, yeah, you, might, you might regret that. I think this might be the first time this year I've tipped him, but I'm going to go south 1-12. to 12. I'm going to go Latrell to score a magic round. Ooh, we okay. talked about him in Vegas, made for him. I think magic round is his. He likes to play in front of big crowds. He did have a blinder this magic yeah. round last year. Yeah. Uh, Warriors Panthers on the Sunday. Obviously, a few players out. Would have no, been excited for this no game pre-season. Theory, no Johnson. Can Warriors show up? Yes, they can. But I think Panthers get the job done still. Yeah. I'm going Would have been excited for this game pre-season. But, Try yeah. scorer? Let's go. Um, <laughs> let's go um, to Ruva. Yeah, to Ruva. Yeah, nice. All right. I'm going to go Panthers 1-12 to as well. I'm going to go Dylan Edwards. Oh, really? Because really? just oh, with yeah. the halves... I can't um, work that's out. A shock. I didn't see that. Coming. Yeah, I can't okay. work out who's gonna, which way they're gonna go and attack. So I'm just gonna go Edwards. He's he, he's everywhere. He is everywhere. Storm Eels. This could really be. Well, ugly. I think last time I played Magic Round, Storm put sixty on him, didn't they? And that was when Ryan Pappenhausen emerged. Yeah, and obviously oh, yeah, that, Eels. Was like, that was the first game I noticed. Yeah, him. yeah. Oh, Pappenhausen that and game. no Moses, no Gutho. Storm should win. They no, like playing the Storm after. I'll double a loss. check if Hughes is back for us. But continue. Who are you playing the storm on? after a loss is never a good sign. He's not playing. Never a good sign. I'm going to storm thirteen plus, and I'm going Harry Grant the score. Yeah, I I back that. It's the worst time thought. to play the storm. Isn't I think it? Eel. Yeah, storm after a loss. Eels down on troops. Obviously, no Hughes again. But yeah, I'm going to go storm thirteen plus. And Papinazan, he had his breakout a couple of years ago at Magic Round. I think far long ago. Or, or he's sort of already broken out. But I think he's has his big breakout game at Magic Round, just like the fullback before him. I'm going far long ago to score. And then the final game to wrap up Magic Round while everyone starts to get post-Magic Round depression, it's Tigers, Dolphins. Who Tiger, wins? Dolphins, Dolphins undefeated at Magic yeah, Round. Up there, should beat the Tigers. Win yeah. comfortably as well, to tell the truth. I'm going to go full life to school. Yeah, I rate that. Magic Round gives me a bit of fuller vibes. Uh, Dolphins, I'm going as well. I'm going Dolphins 1-12. to Jake Avrillo. As I said, if, I, if Dolphins playing, I'm tipping my boy Jake Avrillo to score a try. Plus, he scored at Magic Round last year. I don't remember if he scored before that. Probably has because he's a gun. I remember the Bulldogs did a sick game day graphic for Magic Round last year with like cards flying everywhere and Jake Avrilla running down the middle. And I always think of that when I think of Magic Round. So I'm going to go Jake Avrilla for all those reasons. But Dolphins 1-12. to Zane, that'll do us. Um, yes. That's the end of the podcast. Fire up for Magic Round. Obviously, you're not going up, unfortunately. No, sadly. Maybe one day we'll have a sponsor and we'll be able to afford to fly. Next you year up. will be the year. Next year. And I am going, so stay tuned for a bit of content. Go follow my socials for content. And I think there's going to be some exclusive Orange Peelers yes. podcast episodes featuring some special guests. So stay tuned for that. But that'll do it. Let's trot, baby.